Hi, this is Michelle Walford, and I've been asked to talk to you today about Periscope, which is one of the live streaming apps. Uh, there's quite a few on the market. Periscope and Facebook have emerged as the uh, top two. Lots of cool reasons for extension to use this. The number one reason would be to bring people who don't know who we are or what we do uh, to bring us to their attention. So it, it is a, a fantastic platform to engage with new audiences. Facebook and Periscope operate very, very similarly. I've been asked to talk to you about Periscope, which is owned by Twitter. You can Periscope by itself as a standalone app, or you can connect it to Twitter, which will give you some more exposure. Trolls can be a problem on, on Periscope. These are people who are seeking attention and can be outright disgusting. Um, so you have to deal with that. Um, you can record in portrait or landscape. If you show it through Twitter, the Twitter will come through square, which is what Facebook is. Um, it, you're going to get a wider and global audience. The quality is not going to be that great. Although your camera records in 1080 HD, it will not be that way with a live streaming in Periscope. You can uh, use the same handle as you do with Twitter, which is what I do in my case. And you can record, which is called a scope broadcast. And that scope will last 24 hours and then it just disappears. Or you can choose to, to stay on Facebook or rather stay on Periscope, it's Facebook the same way. And um, you can also choose to save what you broadcast to your camera wall for repurposing. Um, if you are using uh, Periscope, it would be fantastic to try and uh, use some of your uh, colleagues to get them to be on the lookout for your broadcast, your scope, and, and share it out. With somebody like me, for instance, I would be glad if you're doing an extension program, I would be glad to share that out. So my 2,500 followers will get a chance to see it. So it's good to network and get that lined up. There's some equipment. We can't go over all this today in a few minutes, but there's my email address at the top. Email me. I have a list with live links and prices and my ratings of whether something is good or bad. So I'll be glad to share that with you. This is one item, $59. It allows you to plug right into your iPhone or your iPad. I'm not sure about Android, um, but it allows you, it, it comes with a dead cat, which is this furry little uh, sleeve that reduces that wind shear. When you're an extension and you're outside, you're hearing that wind, and that can really ruin what could have been an otherwise great broadcast. So it's something to consider to me. This is a must-have um, accessory. You want to plan ahead. You want to tell people you're live streaming ahead of time. Give them a day or two, or a couple hours at least. That kind of preps people. You want to line up some people who can help ambassador your, your scope and share it out. You want to tell your event host if you're going to be there live streaming. Let them know ahead of time so you don't ambush them with an interview they weren't expecting. Not everybody likes to appear on camera, so you want to ask and let, let people know ahead of time. Interruptions with your signal are, are um, typical. I would say 50% of the time, I'm right in the middle of broadcasting something and it goes out. So you wanna, your descriptions, which are usually three or four lines, hashtag filled, this is what's going to get that person to click on your scope. So it should be compelling. Um, if your power goes out or your broadcast goes out, you don't want to have to be retyping this over and over again. I recommend that you put it in your notes or in some application where you can quickly copy and paste it and get back online again as quickly as possible. It is not perfect. It is live and there's going to be errors and mistakes and you're going to trip over a log or a rock and that's okay. What live streaming, the reason it's resonated is because it is authentic. It's not polished. It can be um, temporary. It can be permanent. That's up to you whether you want it to, to be a lasting record. But the, people, the reason people are connecting to it is the human quality. And so it's not meant to be perfect. This is in the moment. 
very easy to do with Periscope. You can decide here whether you're going to connect with your Twitter account or not. If you don't have a Twitter account, that's fine. You can still Periscope. You can turn your precise sharing on and off. That will let your Periscope appear on a map so somebody in France or somebody in Wyoming can see what's going on in Delaware or vice versa. It does not, it's not precise in, it will tell you you're at 1030 Washington Street. Um, it would just give you a, a, rain, a, block, a couple block range of where you are. You can allow people to um, uh, comment. Only people who follow you, that's going to reduce some trolls, but it's also going to reduce your engagement. The thing that makes this um, exciting is the new people who are coming on, learning about you for the first time. Yes, you're going to get trolls. You have to kind of know how to handle them. Um, and I've had different experiences with that and it can't be too thin skin if they're using expletives or, or if they're really vile, then you block them and you report them. Otherwise you kind of have to let it roll off. A, a sense of humor is, is very, very helpful. So some people don't like that risk, but the risk has its payoffs. Learn to say hello in different languages because you're going to get people from all over the world coming in and, and meeting you for the first time. Um, have definitely have a portable battery with you live streaming and any platform is going to drain your battery very, very quickly. Um, if you're the host, consider having a partner. So if you're going to be on camera, um, it's great if the partner can film you, they can, um, respond to the comments and to the trolls. Uh, be mindful of your signal quality, uh, at all times, because you might have to repaste your description back in. Here's some things you can do, some ideas for content. This was just a, this is a Facebook, uh, doing it ahead of time. So in, fa in Facebook's case, you should let people know you're going to be live streaming a little bit ahead of time. Trolls, um, again, it's more of a problem on Periscope than it is on Facebook, but Facebook doesn't get the audience that Periscope gets. So it's, it's, it's a trade-off. You have to be a little wily, a little don't be too thin skin. You can block and you it can ignore them. If you're on camera, wear your extension um, logo, your gear. Try to think about what's in your background. Use that opportunity if you're sitting at your desk and doing that type of scope. Have your website, your hashtags, your, your taglines, whatever it is, your, the message you're trying to get across. It's a special campaign. Have that in the background so people can see it. And in, in summary, experiment. If you're looking for high quality, if you're looking for perfection, go with a planned video, hire a videographer to do your content. The appeal is because it's real. This is what the authentic human quality, we are human beings helping other human beings with our extension programming and human beings relate to this. So they relate to us being human. So it does not have to be perfect. That's not what live streaming is about. So you have to get over that. If you're an extension professional and everything has to be just so, live streaming may not be for you. This is, it's exciting because of the in the moment aspect of it. If you have any questions, this was short and sweet, call me um, or actually email me and I'll be glad to uh, share with you what I know, the resources that I have and good luck. Get out there and try it. I uh, hope to see you live on Facebook or your Periscope on Twitter. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.